Hello there, very good evening and welcome to the news tonight here on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tracy Shilshi and in the next 30 minutes I'll be getting in the day's top stories. Let's start with the headlines. Rajya Sabha adjourns Sinodai by Chairman Mohammad Hamid Ansari. Monsoon session ends with members passing 14 bills over 20 sittings. Upper House held crucial discussions on issues like Kashmir, atrocities and Dalits and special status for Andhra Pradesh. In Lok Sabha, members expressed concern over the complex and worsening situation in Kashmir, pass a unanimous resolution appealing to all sections to restore confidence among the people and youth of the state. At the all-party meeting on Kashmir, Prime Minister Narendra Modi blames cross-border terrorism for tensions in the state, says Pakistan should answer for atrocities in Balochistan and Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Supreme Court accuses government of sitting over appointments of judges, says it has taken no action on the 75 names that have been recommended since February warns that it will be forced to pass orders to end the statement. And in the Rio Olympics, day six turns out to be a mixed bag for India. Mixed doubles pair of Sane Mirza and Rohan Bopanna and the men's hockey team seal their quarterfinal spots, setbacks in archery, boxing and women's hockey. Our top story, Rajya Sabha was adjourned Sinodai on Friday by Chairman Mohammad Hamid Ansari, bringing to an end the monsoon session. Chairman Ansari called the session highly productive, with 20 sittings, during which it deliberated for more than 112 hours. Here are all the details. The 240th session of the Rajya Sabha that commenced on July 18th came to a close on Friday. The upper house passed 14 bills, but more than 20 hours were also lost on issues like Kashmir, incidents of atrocities on Dalits, demand for special status for Andhra Pradesh and live streaming of security arrangements at the parliament premises by a Lok Sabha member. The house also held an animated debate while considering and passing the GST bill. On 18th of July, the 240th session commenced with high expectations. I'm glad to say that the session was highly productive. There were debates of national concern and discussions on many subjects. Various procedural devices were effectively used to raise issues, reflect public sentiments and legislate through constructive debates. The upper house also welcomed 59 newly elected or re-elected members. While 300 start questions were raised, 333 supplementaries were also taken up. During the session, 123 zero-hour submissions were made, of which 21 were instantly responded to by the ministers. The incidents of violence in Kashmir Valley also engaged the undivided attention of the House. The incidents of violence in Kashmir Valley engaged the undivided attention of the House. The debates took 10 hours of the House in two separate days. The House passed a unanimous resolution on prevailing situation in Kashmir Valley. It earnestly appealed to all sections of society in Jammu and Kashmir to work for the early restoration of normalcy and harmony and unanimously resolved to restore confidence amongst the people in general and youth in particular. During the session, 14 private members' bills were also introduced. Members expressed concern over matters of public importance through 91 special mentions. The Chairman also acknowledged the cooperation extended by the members in overall functioning of the House. Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. Lok Sabha too was adjourned Sinodai today, but ahead of that, the lower house unanimously passed a resolution on Kashmir with members appealing for urgent steps to restore peace in the valley. Members asserted that there can be no compromise with the country's integrity and security. On the last day of the monsoon session of parliament, opposition parties in Lok Sabha demanded that the House pass a resolution on Kashmir where the situation is turning complex and worsening by the day. I want to appeal to you that in the whole summit, one question is that सारे देश के जनता को भी ये मालूम हो कि ये पूरा सदन एक है और कश्मीर के विषय में सभी का एक ही राय है 
और वो जो है और वहाँ पर शांति स्थापन करने के लिए किस किस ढंग से क्या काम करना चाहिए इसके बारे में अगर सरकार एक सर्वसम्मति से रेजोल्यूशन पास कर दी इस सदन से ये अच्छी होगी तो इसीलिए मैं आपसे अपील करता हूं कि सरकार इसको रेस्पॉन्ड करे होम मिनिस्टर राजनाथ सिंह प्रोमली एग्री टू खड़गे डिमांड जम्मू कश्मीर के संबंध में जिस प्रकार के प्रस्ताव की बात हमारे श्रीमान खड़गे जी ने कही है इसी प्रकार का प्रस्ताव एक मैंने प्रस्तुत किया था राज्यसभा में और राज्यसभा ने सर्वसम्मति उसे पारित किया है वहाँ की जनता से अपील की है वहाँ पर पीस और नॉर्मलसी को रिस्टोर करने के संबंध में और जो भी खड़गे जी ने प्रस्ताव रखा है उससे मैं पूरी तरह से सहमत हूँ Speaker Sumitra Mahajan read out the resolution after opposition parties urged her to propose it in the house. That this house expresses its serious concern over the prolonged turbulence, violence, and curfew in the Kashmir Valley, conveys its deep sense of anguish and concern over the loss of lives and critical injuries caused. by the deteriorating situation this house is of the firm and considered view that there cannot be any compromise on unity integrity and national security it is equally imperative that urgent steps are taken to restore order and peace for the elevation of the sufferings of the people the resolution appealed to all section of the society in jammu and kashmir to restore confidence among people in general and youth in particular this house earnestly appeals to all sections of the society in jammu and kashmir and india also i can say of the whole india to work for the early restoration of normalcy and harmony and now this house unanimously resolves to restore the confidence among the people in general and youth in particular i hope the house agrees to this and so the resolution is adopted unanimously Earlier this week the Rajya Sabha passed a similar resolution expressing serious concern over the prolonged turbulence in the Kashmir Valley. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said that the government is ready to discuss grievances of all sections in Jammu and Kashmir under the constitution but he made it clear that there cannot be any compromise with the nation's integrity. Leaders of other political parties also urged the government to take immediate steps to normalize the situation in the state and initiate dialogues with all stakeholders. कानून व्यवस्था और सुरक्षा बनाए रखना किसी भी सरकार का दायित्व होता है आतंक की कार्यवाही से समझौता नहीं होगा दूसरा आज के युग में लोकतांत्रिक परंपरा के अनुकूल ही सिविल सोसाइटी को नागरिक गतिविधियों से जोड़ते हुए प्रोत्साहित किया जाएगा Home Minister Rajnath Singh summing up the Prime Minister's address at the all party meeting on the prevailing situation in Jammu and Kashmir. Opposition leaders urged the government to initiate a dialogue with all stakeholders in the state. Turant jo zarurat hai wo logon ke Kashmir ghati mein aam janta aur vishesh roop se khas taur se jo naujawan hai unke dil और दिमाग जीतने की सबसे बड़ी जरूरत द डायलॉग विद एवरीबडी फ्रॉम ऑल दी ऑल दी ऑल दी ऑल द स्टेक होल्डर्स दैट इज ओनली वे वी हैव डन इट इन द पास्ट वी हैव वी हैव टू डू इट अगेन इन हिज कंक्लूडिंग रिमार्क्स द प्राइम मिनिस्टर आल्सो ब्लेम्ड क्रॉस बॉर्डर टेररिज्म फॉर द टेंशन इन द वैली एंड सेड पाकिस्तान शुड आंसर फॉर द अट्रोसिटीज इन बलूचिस्तान एंड पाकिस्तान ऑक्युपाइड कश्मीर पाकिस्तान भूल जाता है कि वह अपने देश के नागरिकों पर लड़ाकू विमान से बम बरसाता है अब समय आ गया है कि पाकिस्तान को विश्व के सामने बलूचिस्तान बलूचिस्तान में और पाक अधिकृत कश्मीर में लोगों पर हो रहे अत्याचारों का जवाब देना होगा 
The marathon four-hour long meeting saw opposition parties asking the government to take a few immediate confidence-building measures like ending the use of pallet guns and relaxing the AFSPA in some parts of the valley. They also suggested a visit by an all-party delegation to assess the situation in Kashmir. The centre said it will consult the state government on the issue. There is already an expert committee which is looking into it. Now, this is a matter uh, in which uh, the security implications have also to be examined. And therefore, <clears throat> uh, it's only after the expert committee comes out with its opinion, including alternate options, that the government would be in a position to decide uh, the issue. Along with the Prime Minister and senior ministers, the all-party meet was attended by leaders from all political parties, including former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh. With Nav Vikram Singh and Aklesh Suman, Vishal Deya's report for Rajya Sabha TV. The Supreme Court today lashed out at the government, accusing it of sitting over judges' appointments. A three-judge bench led by Chief Justice T.S. Thakur told the government that since February this year, 75 names have been recommended for the post of High Court judges, but none has been approved. Justice Thakur asked Attorney General Mukul Rahadgi if the centre was deliberately trying to bring the judiciary to a grinding halt by not appointing these judges. He even warned that if the government did not do anything about it, the top court would be forced to take it up and clear the logjam. The Attorney General assured that the court uh, would take up the matter at the highest level and get back on the status of the list by the 13th of September. The strong warning from the top court comes four months after the Chief Justice of India broke down before the Prime Minister and urged him to increase the number of judges to deal with the millions of pending cases. On to other news and retail inflation shot up to 6.07% in July as, again five, as against 5.77% a month ago causing jitters. Food inflation in fact rose to 8.35% in July as again 7.79% a month ago. This is the highest level of consumer price index since September 2014. The index of industrial production or IIP grew 2.1% in June as against 4.2% a year ago with a sharp growth in electricity but negligible activity in manufacturing. IIP had grown 1.2% in May. Industrial production, meanwhile, grew at 0.6% in the April-June quarter of the fisc current fiscal compared to 3.3% a year ago. Home Minister Rajnath Singh has said that the possibility or the responsibility, I'm sorry, of protecting Dalits lies with state governments. Singh also said that the NDA government has strengthened existing laws, making them more stringent, and that laws to fight terrorism were also being reworked. Home Minister Rajnath Singh on Friday called upon states to come Thank forward you. and implement laws to protect Our Dalits. States. While addressing the two-day National Conference of Investigation Agencies, Singh said there were ample provisions in the constitutions for the protection of the Dalit community. The of Atrocities Act इस संशोधन के पश्चात इस कानून में अपराधों की नई श्रेणियों को जोड़ा जाएगा इसमें लोक सेवकों के कर्तव्य को निर्दिष्ट करने के साथ-साथ कर्तव्यों को नजरअंदाज करने पर सजा का प्राविधान भी किया गया है इस कानून में पीड़ितों एवं गवाहों के अधिकारों के बारे में भी एक चैप्टर जोड़ा गया है इस कानून को लागू करने की जिम्मेदारी स्थानीय पुलिस व राज्य सरकार की होगी he also said that probe agencies were being formed in all 564 specially to deal with crime against women. The estimated 324 crore rupees for this would be provided jointly by the state and the union governments. Unit of crime against women of Stapit ki ya rahi hai. In ikaiyo mein ek tihai mahila investigator hongi aur in ikaiyo ko kendra aur rajya sarkar dwara 50 is to 50 percent partnership ke aadhar par fund uplabd karaya jayega kendra sarkar in ikaiyon ki madad ke liye agle 2 barso mein lagbhag 324 crore kharch karegi the home minister also lamented the misuse of social media in incidents of terror the center is also going to establish a cyber crime coordination center to fight the menace he urged the national probe agencies to use its services Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. 
In other news, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi today said that India has to decide if it wants to support China on the South China Sea dispute. Yi, who is on a three-day visit to India, arrived in Goa this morning to hold a meeting with Goa Chief Minister Lakshmi Khan Parthikar over the BRICS summit. The summit is scheduled to be held in October. Wang will meet uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his counterpart Sushma Swaraj on Saturday. He and Swaraj are expected to hold talks on various issues of mutual interest, including the upcoming G20 summit being held in China and the BRICS summit being held in India. According to sources, China would try to make efforts to ensure that India does not join other countries in raising the controversial issue of South China Sea in the G20 summit. Recently, China refused to recognize the ruling by an arbitration court in The Hague that invalidated its vast territorial claims on South China Sea. It is up to India to decide what position to take. During the visit, the two sides will discuss various issues of mutual interest, including the upcoming multilateral meetings, namely G20 summit being held in China and the BRICS summit being held in India. And now let's take you through what else meet news across the country today in Nationwide. The CAG today refuted claims of the government of making huge subsidy savings from direct benefit transfer. In a report tabled in Parliament, the CAG said only 1,764 crore rupees were saved in subsidy on LPG. The Supreme Court today lifted the ban on registration of luxury vehicles and SUVs in the Delhi NCR region. The registration will be permitted on the payment of an environment protection charge by manufacturers. Registration of vehicles with an engine capacity above 2 litres will happen after the deposit of 1% of the ex-showroom price of each vehicle. Uttar Pradesh BJP leader Brijpal Tutia was today shot at in Ghaziabad. His SUV was attacked by four attackers. Tutia was rushed to a local hospital and later shifted to Fortis Hospital in Noida when his condition deteriorated. He has reportedly sustained at least five gunshots. Police suspect personal enmity behind the attack. Mumbai local trains resumed services on the central line after protesters dispersed at Badlapur station. Services were disrupted between Karjat and Ambarnath due to the agitation that started after a technical snag delayed one of the trains. The protests at Badlapur station happened due to the routine delay in train services. Heavy rains in Himachal Pradesh claimed one more life today in Kangra, taking the death toll to 25. The rains even washed away a 44-year-old bridge. Rains hit Kangra, Hamirpur and Bilaspur districts, inundating the low-lying areas and disrupting water and power supply. More rains are expected to hit the state tomorrow. With a quick break here, but up next, we're getting you all the action from Rio. Stay with us. Approximately maybe 40% of the under 5 children are undernourished. The type of food that you take and second thing is your physical activity also. That is something which has become a, a casualty in this modern day life. It is a question of moderation that needs to be adopted by the people to have a healthy lifestyle. Watch Eureka with Dr. P. Uday Kumar. Senior Deputy Director, National Institute of Nutrition, only on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. Let's uh, talk about Rio now and India's medal hopes disappointed once again. Day 7 saw the country's challenge ending in archery and women's doubles badminton. India's lone standing archer Atanu Das lost in the pre quarter final of the individual recurve event against Korea's Lee Sung Yun. Shooting amid heavy rain, Atanu went down 4 6 to the world number 8. In shooting, Gagan Narang and Chen Singh bowed out of the 50 meters rifle prone event. 
Narang finished in the 13th spot with a score of 623.1, while Jian Singh finished in 36th place with a score of 619.6. India also had a bad start in athletics as discus thrower Vikas Gauda failed to qualify for the finals. He finished 28th in the qualifying round with a best throw of 58.99 metres. In the women's shot put, Manpreet Kaur also failed to qualify for the finals. In badminton, the women's doubles pair of Jwala Gota and Ashwini Ponapa crashed out after losing their second straight group stage match. The duo were beaten 21-16, 16-21, 21-17 by the Netherlands team. Meanwhile, India faced another controversy after organizers at Rio threatened to cancel Sports Minister Vijay Goel's accreditation for the rude and aggressive behavior of his aides accompanying him. The officials said that the sports minister tried to enter venues with unaccredited individuals multiple times and warned that any further violation will lead to action against the minister. Goel, however, claimed that he was following rules and was fully committed to the spirit of the Games. And talking of Rio, as far as the other teams go, Day 6 brought another gold medal for Michael Phelps, who won his 22nd Olympic gold with victory in the 200 meters individual medley. While USA remains on top of the medals tally, Fiji backed their first ever Olympic gold by beating Great Britain in rugby sevens. Here are more on the results. American swimmer Michael Phelps continued his dominance in the swimming arena as he bagged his 22nd Olympic gold by winning the 200 meters individual medley. With the win, Phelps became the first swimmer to win the same event at four consecutive games. The 31-year-old has now won two individual and two relay goals at his fifth Olympics and has a chance to add one more with the 100 meters butterfly event still to come. I mean, I said this a lot, but it's it really it, it's every single day I'm living a dream come true. You know, this is something that you know, as a kid, I wanted to do something that nobody had ever done before. Um, and, and I'm enjoying it. I think that's something that I couldn't say about my career in 2012. So, um, you know, being able to finish how I won is, is something very special to me and, and is why you're seeing more and more emotion on the uh, medal podium. The women's 100 meters freestyle saw a rare finish as American Simone Manuel and Canadian Penny Oleksiak touched the wall at the same time in a new Olympic record time. Both swimmers finished in 52.70 seconds to take away the gold medal. With the victory, Manuel became the first African-American woman to win an individual swimming gold for the United States. Meanwhile, Fiji erupted in wild celebrations after winning their first ever Olympic gold, defeating Great Britain in the men's rugby sevens. The island nation produced a breathtaking performance that epitomized the pace, power and skill of their distinctive brand of rugby to win 43-7. In gymnastics, American Simone Biles produced a stunning performance to win the women's all-round Olympic gold medal. The 19-year-old, who had been labelled the greatest ever female gymnast even before she made her Olympic debut, scored 62.198 to win her second Olympic medal by a margin of more than two points. Compatriot Ali Raisman claimed silver, while Russia's Alia Mustafina settled for bronze. Britain won the men's track cycling team sprint gold for the third consecutive Olympics after defeating New Zealand in the final. While South Korea continued its dominance in women's archery, with Chang Hyojin winning the individual archery title. In the overall medals tally after day six, the United States tops the list with 38 medals that include 16 gold, 12 silver and 10 bronze. China takes the second spot with 30 medals that include 11 gold, 8 silver and 11 bronze, while Japan retains the third spot with 7 gold medals. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. On to international news line, multiple bomb attacks at popular tourist places across Thailand left four people dead and several injured. However, authorities believe the incidents are an act of local sabotage and not linked to any terrorist group. Hua Hin, Phuket, Trang and Surat Thani. 
Four popular tourist spots in Thailand saw multiple bomb blasts in the wee hours of Friday morning. At least two people were killed. In the last 24 hours, four bombs exploded in the resort of Hua Hin, while several blasts hit the island of Phuket. Two explosions were reported from Surat Thani within a space of just half an hour. The Thai police are investigating the attacks. They, however, denied links to any international terrorist group while calling it an act of local sabotage. การเหตุการณ์ที่เกิดมันต่างจากการก่อการร้ายครับขอยืนยันว่าต่างจากการก่อการร้ายในประเทศต่างๆที่ผ่านมาเพราะว่าอันนี้เป็นการก่อวินา